Yo, what's going on guys? Happy Kino I'm back. Today we're back at it again with 17 more things only Clash of Clans OGs might remember. This is supposed to be a part 3 to my other two episodes, so in case you haven't watched those, links will be down below and it'll also be at the end of the video. Like last time, I read a lot of you guys' comments on the previous episode, and if you guys have any more ideas, feel free to comment them down below for a future episode. I honestly don't know what I'll call the next part, maybe 17 even, even more? <laughs> I don't know, I'll have to think about it. So, with that being said, let's get right into it. How P.E.K.K.A.s used to spin as their attack animation. I'm not gonna lie, I had to search that up to help me remember. And then, it finally came to me. Right! When I started playing Clash of Clans, I do remember P.E.K.K.A. spinning in their attack. But then I stopped playing, and when I returned in May of 2013, they no longer spun. But God, this one is super nostalgic. Yes, P.E.K.K.A.s used to spin in the middle of an attack as one of their attack animations. This was changed in March of 2013. This one though, really brought back some long lost memories. When searching for a base, the troops were automatically selected, so when you missed the next button, you placed a troop and had to attack that base. Yeah. It sounds annoying, and it was the struggles back then. Jesus. For some reason, when looking for a base, a troop in your army was automatically selected for you. Like, why? This created problems with people accidentally dropping a troop when trying to tap next. So, naturally, people started treating the next button as a bomb that could detonate any time. So everyone would carefully tap the next button and make sure that they weren't tapping near it. And if you had fat fingers, well, you better hope you have a big device. Because my fat fingers on that iPhone 4 used to tap next and all of a sudden I'm attacking a random base. Those days when wizard towers used to shoot lightning bolts instead of a fireball. I actually don't remember this one, which is a huge surprise, but uh, yeah. Maybe I didn't pay as much attention to the wizard shooting animation, but regardless, I did a bit of research and found out that yes, after the wizards got to level 4, their fireballs were more of a lightning type of shot. This also carried over to the wizard towers as long as the wizard on top was level 4 or higher. It probably isn't too noticeable, but today, level 4 wizards and higher don't have that lightning effect. Instead, they shoot more of a blue or purple beam that kind of looks like a fireball, but someone squished it together so it looks thinner. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool to see the old wizard though. Once again, I had no idea, but I'm sure any OG out there may remember when this was one to think. I don't know for sure when this was changed either because it's nowhere to be found in any patch notes. When there were storages on the roof of the clan castle, I didn't even notice it was gone until I saw this comment. Crazy, something had just vanished and I didn't even realize it. When treasuries were added to the game, the clan castles were given a slight redesign. In order to fit the new resources coming in now, they decided to add mini storages on top of every clan castle. I thought it looked pretty sweet, not gonna lie. But years later, this would eventually be removed. Now I couldn't find this anywhere in the patch notes, so I'm assuming they just removed it one update. Assuming it was no big deal, and I mean, yeah, it's... It's not a big deal. I believe the treasury was reworked at some point, and so they ended up removing the small storages altogether. When clicking find a match, they took your entire shield away without even attacking. This one was really frustrating, but then again, everyone got used to it. The golden rule was if you want to keep your shield, then don't look for a match because you would lose it immediately even if you didn't attack anyone. There was also no shield guard, so there was no such thing as attacking someone but still keeping some sort of shield. No. I'm not exactly sure when this change took place, but I vividly remember avoiding to even click on the attack button. Today, it's pretty much impossible to accidentally lose your shield unless you attack someone or manually remove it. During the winter update, snow actually used to be found on top of buildings, but it doesn't happen anymore. I believe I mentioned this one in one of my 25 things players hate episodes, but pretty much, it's exactly what it sounds like. When it used to snow in Clash of Clans, the buildings had an added effect of snow piling on top of them. So some defenses had snow on them, and your town hall was nearly covered in snow. Unfortunately, the winter of 2019 was the last time this would ever happen, because in the winter of 2020, when it came time to snow, 
There was none of it piling up. There was just the snow animation. It's unknown why this was removed, but it could have been so that older phones can keep up with the updates they have every year. And perhaps the snow piling up wasn't just worth keeping. So uh, yeah, they got rid of it. When we could change the clan badge style when it leveled up. When clan levels were first added to the game in February of 2015, I remember a time where you could customize your clan badge according to what level you had reached, which was really awesome, like it was cool. So it's basically the same as we have today, but there was an extra option for customization. You could change the clan banner, which is pretty much what's behind the clan badge. Every time your clan leveled up, you would unlock more borders that you could use. Unfortunately, for some reason, this was removed in October of 2017 to simplify the system. After this update, you could no longer change your border. Instead, it would be done automatically for you every time you leveled up the clan. To be honest, I preferred the older system. It was cooler and more fun, but uh, yeah, I guess everything comes to an end. When you didn't need to build everything to go up a Town Hall. When Town Hall 12 was released in June of 2018, it was made so that everyone had to purchase every building for that Town Hall before being able to go up to the next Town Hall. But before this was ever a thing, you could literally rush from Town Hall 1 to 11 without building any buildings. Of course, with the exception of the tutorial buildings. This is why sometimes you see a base that seems to be missing a lot of buildings. They either sold everything when it was possible in 2012, or they simply just didn't build any of it. This is also why series on YouTube like No Walls was popular because it was possible and it was rather interesting. Like I said though, this was all changed when Town Hall 12 was released. When you could cancel an upgrade and keep 100% of the resources used. This was removed due to people hiding resources. The way you hide resources is by upgrading expensive buildings before going offline, so the enemy saw less to take. Then, after the defense, the player would cancel those upgrades and get all of his resources back. It was great while it lasted, but seeing that too many people abused the feature, the refund for canceling a building was reduced to 50%. So then, if you were to try to hide your resources, you would actually be at a loss once you cancel that upgrade. Turning the language to Norsk to get into the best global chat. <sighs> yes, the days. So Norsk is only a language setting in the game. But if you remember, when you change the game's language, it would also change the server of the global chat. It's hard to explain, and perhaps many people don't remember, but Norsk was sort of known as the good global chat. Although it was a different language, most people there spoke English, and were usually pretty high in trophies and very mature. It was used as a secret chat for high levels and people in the leaderboards. But it didn't last long. Word got out that you could find good players in this chat that weren't asking if any girls were online. <laughs> Eventually, Norsk was invaded by cringy people. And uh, yeah, it was ruined. When the heroes took two weeks for a level 4 king. Good old days when everything took two weeks to upgrade even if you were a Town Hall 7. Town Hall 6 and 5, you weren't safe. Maybe at Town Hall 4 it was alright, but uh, yeah. It was sad, but we were all used to it. Yes, the Barbarian King did take that long to upgrade even at low levels. For comparison, today, upgrading a king to level 4 takes 8 hours. 8 hours! That's insane! It's crazy how much the game has decreased the upgrade time so much for everything. Although I'll never get that time back that I spent waiting, it's good to see that people who are getting into the game right now can start off pretty quickly. When you upgrade the heroes to a certain level, some of their gear would be golden, for example the King's Gamlet. Before the heroes and Clash of Clans were made into a 3D model in time to introduce skins, heroes were instead a 2D model. Well, obviously. But that wasn't the only thing different. They actually changed as you level them up. So when first unlocking the king, his armor was mostly a silver gray color. And as he got to level 10, then 20, and so on, he would have more gold and he would progressively change. The same way as troops change. But obviously, when the heroes were made 3D, these changes would no longer occur. Instead, you would get a default skin that could only be changed by using a skin. 
Red Gem Packs and Exclusive Items. I thought I mentioned this one in a previous episode, but I guess I forgot. I don't know. I did mention it in one of my facts videos though. Pretty much over the years, Clash of Clans has partnered with Apple and Red in the fight for an AIDS-free generation. You could participate by buying the Red Pack in the shop, and all proceeds would go toward the cause. In 2014, you would get a neat flag on your town hall for a limited time. And then the same thing would happen in 2015. Now in 2016, which seems to be the last year Clash of Clans ever did this, you've received an exclusive statue and a badge for the Barbarian King. Now unlike the flags that were only temporary for about a month and the King's Arm badge, the statue was permanent and you could keep it forever. The thought of this being that long ago is mind blowing because it felt like these events happened recently, but yeah, no, the last time this happened was five years ago when the Hog Rider's target was any and not defenses. In my facts video, I mentioned that when the Hog Riders was first released, it had no preferred target. And yeah, you can only imagine how weird that would have been. Hog Riders would literally just go for anything. That includes mines and pumps, barracks, defenses, anything. But of course, they would eventually be changed to prefer defenses first. And if a base has no more defenses left, the Hog Riders will go back to attacking anything in sight like they once used to. When the Barbarian King used to be a mobile rage unit for all Barbarians and not just the ones he spawned. This one is pretty small depending on how you see it, but it still counts as one of those OG things. The King's ability today only affects the Barbarian the King spawns, but before the change in March of 2018, the King's ability also enraged any Barbarians in the radius. Meaning even if he didn't spawn them, as long as they were Barbarians, they would also get the effect under his ability. Although, I don't think they ever gave a reason for this. I believe this was to balance out the game a little bit more, but I could be wrong, so I don't know. When training troops in Night Village took time. I've left this one toward the end because the changes were made fairly recently. But not like a month ago, it was more like a year and some change ago. When Builder Hall was at it in 2017, you had to wait for your troops to train. And you also had to wait for your battle machine to regenerate. Unfortunately though, the Builder base isn't the same as the home village. And so players got impatient. Because they felt like all this waiting was unnecessary and... I have to agree. So in March of 2020, the training time and hero regeneration was removed altogether. And... Thank you, it's better this way. All the temporary troops, like Ice Wizard, Party Wizard, El Primo, etc. I've left this one for last because these things still happen today, but it still felt very nostalgic to look back at all the temporary troops they've added into the game. From Clash Royale, we had the Ice Wizard, Battle Ram, Giant Skeleton, Skeleton Barrel, and the Royal Ghost. From Brawl Stars, we had El Primo. And then we had a few changes to existing troops like the Party Wizard and Pumpkin Barbarian. I actually remember keeping my Ice Wizards for about 7 months, although I wasn't really playing at the time so I didn't mind holding it for that long, but it still felt very special. So guys, I think that should be it for the 17 things only OGs might remember. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is a part 3 to this series. I don't know how it became a series, but we're still going. And if you guys want to see a part 4, definitely let me know down below some of the things that you might remember from the old days that isn't so obvious. If you guys want to watch part 1 and 2, you can click on the playlist on the left side. So. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace!